Hello guys, welcome back to the channel and thank you guys so much for being here for my Black Beauty series. This is episode three, I can't believe it already. Um, thank you for being patient as I took a little time off. Sometimes doing these videos and researching topics gets stressful and daunting with the real world and what's going on and researching some of these topics is really sad. I mean last week it was just, or last episode it was just so negative in a sense the story needs to be shared and I want to tell these stories, but it's it's alarming how many terrible things have happened in this country. And uh, yeah, this is just a way for me to learn and shed light on it and um, really get to know our history. So it's important for me to do. It's important for me to do the work and step and press forward, but it, it, it can come with its challenges. I mean, I'm only human, you know? So with that, my name is Michaela Hawkinson. Welcome to my Black Beauty series. Today we're going to be talking about Jim Crow laws and blackface. I thought it was a great segue. Last episode I talked about Emmett Till and racial injustice in the South and I thought this was a great way to lead into Jim Crow. So that's what we're going to connect on today and uh, buckle up because it's, it's really insane what people go through and uh, what steps people will go through to make sure that African Americans don't have the same as others. But um, I really felt compelled to talk about this because of systemic racism from the past and how it has left such a stamp on present day life. How, you know, the microaggressions and the, um, the anger that people feel towards those that just want to feel equal and have the same. I don't know why people get so angry about it, but that's really where Jim Crow stems from, you know. As always, I feature a black beauty brand, a black owned beauty brand. This week, the featured brand is Uoma Beauty, and I will show you as I use the products, obviously. Um, I had to wait for a couple of the, like one of the products to come in because I've never owned Uoma before. This is a new brand for me to try too, which is also a great part of all of this. So let's get into this video. So what is a Jim Crow law? A Jim Crow law is legalized state and local statutes that are created for racial segregation. Okay, so these are laws governed and created specifically to make sure that whites and blacks did not blend or mix. And then I was like, you know, as I was doing my research, I was like, you know what? I don't think I was ever taught what like where Jim Crow came from. Like we've always just called them Jim Crow laws. Apparently before that they were called black codes and um, then the name Jim Crow came from connecting characters from blackface. And I was like, no way, that's, that's crazy, right? So um, yeah, that's kind of how I found out the connection between the two. So blackface is where white performers act as black characters and paint themselves in black and then act as these black characters in a really rude and dehumanizing fashion. Like anytime you really saw the characters, they were slap happy and dumb and it really just dehumanized the idea that blacks were as equal as whites, which is so sad and disgusting when you think about you know I think I guess I just kind of take it slightly to science too like the idea that you know things that have been created you know through time invented um, you have a brain I have a brain just because my skin tone is a little different our brains are different and I'm dumber like it's just it the the thought process that people had to try to keep people from progressing in their lives was crazy but yes yeah, so blackface um, they would use burnt cork, shoe polish, anything that they could find and completely cover their face, um, but leaving rings around the eyes and the lips so that they looked almost like blown out of proportion and kind of created more of that dummy dehumanizing look. Kind of the way we like, um, we, kind of the way people will reference to monkeys and baboons, that kind of thing, like that overpowered look. It's really... It's really quite disgusting, oh my god. So a New York actor, Thomas Dartmouth Rice, would travel to the South and observe, I don't know, like these people were in a zoo or something, slaves in their natural fields, so to speak, and from observing them 
would figure out how to then create his minstrel character that we know as Jim Crow. I had no idea. I had no idea that it was connected to a blackface character. I was like, that is flipping insane. And really sad and gross, but yes. So that is where that comes from. Um, there are other blackface characters out there as well. Um, do I want that on my eye? Just a little bit, right? It's cute. Just a little gold, but not nothing too much. Yeah, I can deal with that. That's pretty cool. cool. Two other famous characters that people really know about are like the Mammy character, which is the big, heavy, oversized black woman, you know, with the bonnet in the kitchen. That's all she knows how to do is cook a meal and boss the house around. And then Zip Coon, which was like the crazy, zany, dressed up guy over the top with the suspenders and such things. And he blabbered a lot, said really wild words and like couldn't pronounce anything correctly. And like that kind of comes from like, you know, that then stems into now like, oh, you know, black people can't pronounce things or they kind of make fun of the way that they speak. I, you know, it's just also rooted in history and it's, it's, it's crazy. But um, yeah, so blackface has really been rooted in our history. And then the character of that is then was then adopted into the black codes, which were these systemic laws. Um, that made sure that blacks and whites in the South did not have equal rights, etc. On a slightly positive note, the appeal for blackface did die down as the civil rights movement came about, but um, it, it was very popular for a really long time. It traveled all over the place. It went into circuses. It filmed. I found out that Shirley Temple as a little girl was put into blackface. Like, what? But yes, we will get more into blackface into in another um, video, but that is where Jim Crow comes from. So just real quick, I'm using the Uoma Beauty Cleopatra ink to do my winged liner today. Um, it's a really nice, I think it's a brush tip liner. Um, I really wanted like a big wing today. I think you have to shake it first. I did not do that. Am I pressing anything? working. Uh, hmm. It's like not coming out. I might need to buy a new one. Man, I just bought that. We have to figure that out. Sorry, I had to switch over to another eyeliner. That eyeliner wasn't working. I'm not sure why, but we'll get to the bottom of it and I'll try it in another video. Um, so where were we? What were we talking about? Oh, blackface moving forward. Um, and then we going into the state and local laws. In the beginning of these black codes and Jim Crow laws, what they would do is call it indentured servitude so it was basically a way to legalize hiring and using people like slaves you know to do their work and their bidding um i don't know if you've ever seen the movie uh the help but kind of like that maybe even a little bit before that um so a lot of people would nanny do these jobs and maybe not get paid and then they would create these laws as well when the black codes originally started and they would take um, black people's children away from them and use them for labor. And that was legal at this point. So they found a way to legalize slavery and child labor because they were pretty upset um, at the laws that had passed that made them free. How, how could we possibly do the work if we don't have black people to do it for us? It's just insane. Lazy, lazy. Y'all could have done it yourselves. Now, I think as far as black history goes, uh, we, we do know a little more about Jim Crow than some other things in history that I'll be tapping into. 
because I, I remember talking about it in school and such so it's not like it was you know completely foreign to me to research this um i didn't know some of the extents of the things that people were doing to make sure that you know blacks didn't have equal things but um yeah i mean i feel like most people will understand and know what i'm talking about with these but moving forward how were these laws set forth right the list is extremely long and tedious it's really really sad but um the there's no like limit to the laws that you could do in order to make sure that places in the south were segregated and that blacks did not have equal rights i'm just going to do my foundation and then i'm going to read off this list because i because i because i wrote down a lot and i just want to make sure that i focus and read it for you quick so these laws were set forth in such ways uh, being able to have the right to vote going to school or receiving an education having an occupation of any sort that wasn't connected to indentured servitude purchasing a home attending public parks or public schools using restrooms and drinking fountains eating at restaurants and going to the movie theater public transportation stations including the bus or the train what side of a building you could enter into water fountains, cemeteries, elevators, and phone booths, living in white neighborhoods, going into hospitals or elderly homes, and asylums for the mentally ill as well. And that I feel like is just, I mean, so basically anywhere you went in public, if you were black, you were segregated or asked to go somewhere else. Okay, it's just, it's, it's amazing. So uh, the other Uloma beauty product that I wanted to use was their Stay Woke Concealer. Um, I've never tried this before. I got Bronze Venus T1 was the shade color I got. So we're gonna try this today. It's got a nice big applicator. Actually, the applicator very much mimics. The applicator very much mimics the Tarte Shape Tape concealer. I really like that applicator. It is a little smaller than the Tarte Shape Tape, but it's good. So um, I'm just gonna apply this under the eye, pretty coloring. It's very um, soft in texture, which is nice. It doesn't have like, sometimes they have like a clay feel to them. So that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. so Alright, let's blend this out and see how it does. I like that the color that I chose has kind of a peachy undertone so it doesn't leave like kind of like a dusty finish on my skin. I do really like that. very highlighting I think it was one of the things it said it was like a brightening concealer I can definitely tell that it is all right then I'm gonna blend it out with my wet Juno sponge Uoma Beauty. Very beautiful, very brightening. It's not sitting heavy or cakey in the skin. There's a hair in my eye. I'm really liking that finish. Okay, I love that product. I'm really disappointed the liner didn't work, but I'll figure it out and I'll order another one or something. That's so odd. Because um, I've seen other people use it. That was one of the reasons I ordered it. I was like, oh shoot, this looks amazing. So, I don't know set it and see how the setting powder does with it. So tiny little tip because we're here for makeup too. 
The reason I set with the sponge is I like the way it sets and presses the powder into the skin better and my sponge is wet so it will kind of diffuse and not make the skin, uh, the chalk, the chalk. <laughs> <laughs> will not make the powder so chalky and heavy as it sets into my skin and on my nose a lot of the time I'll pick up a bit of powder and kind of draw a streak down it my nose is the oiliest point on my face so having it sit there for a little bit and bake cook set simmer into my skin really helps control oil throughout the day when I'm wearing my makeup and that's your tip for the day <laughs> moving back to Jim Crow we took our little makeup break there um, all the things I have mentioned were like, including but not limited to. Um, but I think some of the crazier ones, I mean, we've all seen like the classic pictures where it says colored over here. Um, you're not welcome here. I've seen that one. Um, you know, no co colored section. You just sit in your own section. Um, and I remember there was something really strange, kind of like a... A weird thing I came across that like when you were going to court so you had broken one of these laws when you were asked to appear in court um, and you had to swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth so help you God kind of thing um, they would wipe the Bible after or use a completely separate Bible altogether out of worry that the black would rub off on the Bible and nobody wanted that so they made sure to have separate Bibles for when you were being in, put on trial and eventually imprisoned for accidentally going into the movie theater and sitting on the right instead of the left side how could you yeah so a lot of the times if you broke any of these laws you were put on trial and your trial and your hearing was not necessarily obviously um, a hearing of your peers or you were the right to a jury of your peers excuse me um, because while well, African Americans were dumb and couldn't appear in court on a jury so you were nine times out of ten in an all-white jury and you were accused and it didn't matter and you shouldn't have broken a Jim Crow law which then led to the rise of African Americans in jail and um, then using them as indentured servitude and making their sentences so long that they didn't stand a chance of living out their sentences and they and they died in prison. It worked out for them because they got free labor from the black prisoners. Um, at this time too, the KKK was on the rise and uh, it was this secret society that really um, made up from like the highest of high government officials and the lowest of low people that just hated black people and they were the superior race and they would you know really uphold uh, God, these um these laws and the idea of you know blacks being more superior to whites and blacks not deserving the same treatment through lynchings through attacking them but they were systems like systemic about like it they were they were smart about it, so to speak. Um, yeah, it's just crazy. It's just crazy. Um, but there was no real fairness or justice to these laws. If you broke a law, basically you were screwed. I mean, there's there's not much you could do. Um, another way that they would, you know, make sure that um, two two things to make sure that African Americans and Blacks weren't. Um, treated the same as they would you know the kkk would rally and go and attack buildings and burn them down so like if you had a segregated building for oh god anything like that i read off um they would go out of their way to burn it down so that you had no place to go you didn't deserve to go any place and it's just it's so crazy that like these rules you know from confederate veterans and the whole nine were just it's just it's a weird thing to wrap your head around I think that like it was do or die you follow these rules because they set them forth and that was that I think it's just so weird to see how it trickles down and these Confederate veterans and all these people you know just truly believe that they didn't deserve to have anything and they would do anything in their power to continuously suppress and shove them down the other statement I was going to make is that with housing and with voting 
So if you wanted to purchase a home, you were not allowed as an African American. Um, and you were then, you know, and then that would push them to the cities because they obviously couldn't afford to be out. I don't want this highlighter. Hold on. Sorry. So blacks could not afford um, to purchase these homes. Um, they would either make the price so outrageously high or they just didn't make enough money at all to purchase a home. They would do anything in their power to make sure that they didn't buy homes. So then they, you know, would transfer and congregate to the city, find places to live that were affordable. It was really difficult for housing and for um, people in the black community to have something that white people had. Shocking. The other one was voting rights. You could not vote if you were an African American. Um, you had to take an outrageous literacy test and have so many years of schooling to prove that you were allowed to vote. Um, if you were white, you did not have to take these literacy tests. They were solely for African Americans to keep them from putting in their vote. Um, and then obviously with women's rights too. So no, anyone from the black population did not vote for a very long time. It was just, it was bad. Bad, bad, bad. I'm gonna spray my face and then do my mascara and my lashes. So I guess the next step and portion of all this is how did these end? Because clearly on paper and legally these laws don't stand today, right? So we had to make somewhat of a little bit of progress here to um, break these laws. There were five that I chose that I really thought um, helped push these laws out and move equality forward. Um, Truman did military integration, which was huge so that um, blacks could go be in branches of the military and earn their keep and a great living that way um, with money to send back to their families. I thought that was bold. That was big. You know, every man should have the opportunity and have the right um, to want to fight for their country. Where are my tweezers? Continue with my five things that I think helped progress all of this. The Supreme Court with the Brown v. Board of Education um, to help with integrating African Americans into schools. I thought that was a big one. Of course they're all big. These are all monumental things that helped to try to build equality for African Americans. In 1964, Lyndon B. Johnson signed the Civil Rights Act, which put into motion a big, a big push forward with all of this. And just for the definition on the Civil Rights Act, it outlawed discrimination based on color, race, religion, sex, or national origin. It prohibits unequal application of voter registration requirements and racial segregation in schools, employment, and public accommodations. So it, it was huge. I mean, that was, was definitely a big one. Sorry, my lash was giving me a lot of trouble. The next um, movement that I wanted to talk about was the Voting Rights Act of 1965. Um, that was signed and Martin Luther King there was there for the signature, so that was huge. Um, and that took away the discrimination and the literacy tests to make it so that blacks couldn't vote. I thought that was monumental as well. And then in 1968, the Fair Housing Act, which helped with um, renting and purchasing discrimination uh, for housing. And just like that, the makeup is done. So yes, um, it is amazing to do the research and read about the Jim Crow laws and see how the discrimination still plays a factor in present time. Um, I think it's really jarring to know that people went out of their way to make sure that people of color did not have just the simple things like you were beaten up if you drank from the wrong water fountain, you were lynched if you tried to have the same type of education your buildings and your churches and your place of worship were burnt down but that still happens today like people still believe in that type of structure today they do not want african americans to get forward they truly believe you know that they are 
are dumber and and just don't grasp or deserve I, I don't know don't grasp intelligence don't deserve the same right it's just a lot to take in sometimes but um as much as I think we have not made progress I think we have I mean but the fact that today because of systemic racism you know inherently as a as an African American person you feel like you have to fight more that's crazy like it's just it's really unjust but we can do the work and we can press forward and we can still have the opportunity to make this place better for generations to come we have that opportunity yeah so with that thank you for coming to episode three of my black beauty series on jim crow laws please let me know in the comments down below um what you're doing to push forward with different movements what you're doing um, that you want me to know about or just to create a discussion and what would you like to see next um, I think I've really tried to cover you know different various topics and I will continue to do so but yeah uh, just let me know if there's something in particular you want to see I'd be happy to research it and do it for you guys um, so with that thank you so much for watching um, take care of yourself right now. I think one of the reasons I took a week and a half break was because I needed to just look out for my mental health and connect with my family members sometimes and just uh, just take a minute, you know, because the, the research that I'm doing is a little dark. And that's okay, I, you know. It's a, I'm telling myself and learning that it's okay. Mm, that's cute. Um, as I was saying, it's okay to, you know, look out for yourself. So with that, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate all of you. Don't stop pushing forward. And I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.